Hi guys, welcome back to Drumhead. Um, and again, we've got the, the fabulous Dom Famularo with us. And now we're going to look at something slightly different, which is the molar technique applied to the drum kit. Okay, so Dom's going to explain that and different ways you can use these different techniques to create different sounds and then choose which one you want to play based on the music that you're playing. Over to you, Dom. Boy, great, Rich. You know, understand, Sanford Augustus Moeller was born in the 1880s. And he died in the 1960s. And he was a, you know, a, you know, he learned from Civil War drummers. And when they were playing outdoors, they needed the big sound and more power. So they learned about this arc motion and this arc motion. So the molar movement is just that. It's just a movement. It's not a method. It's not a, it's not a you know, curriculum. It's just a movement. <laughs> and in that motion, this whipping motion that Moeller understood from these old Civil War drummers in, in the American you know, Civil War, and these guys were playing 10 hours a day. So they, they, they had their technique was so loose and rubbery. So Moeller, as a young child, and like back in like 1895, starts learning this technique. He brings it into the, into the 20th century. In 1938, Jim Chapin, the young Jim Chapin, was his best student, studied with him for several years, and Jim was able to apply this motion into jazz drumming. Moeller was a rudimental player. He was not a jazz drummer. Right. So when Jim applied this movement to jazz, they began to see that this Moeller movement really had great advantages in jazz. It was now back in the, in the late 60s, early 70s, that I started to discover this with Jim Chapin and said this really has great advantages in rock and funk. Mm -hmm. And Jim said, boy, that's great that you see it that way because now that just per, you know, further perpetuates yeah. this technique. Yeah. So in this motion, the molar motion, if you're imagining that you have a, a, a string on your, on your wrist and the tip of the stick is 1,000 pounds, and with it being 1,000 pounds, you pick it up, it would dip a little bit. So the arc of the wrist is what's creating that stroke. So that motion, that whip motion, is, what, is really what all that molar is. It's just that whip motion. So by playing that, when Chapin discovered it, You play that first whip and then two free taps. Yeah. So it's kind of like whip, tap, tap, whip, tap, tap, whip, tap, tap, like this. So that motion, if I'm playing it, and understand, if I'm playing it here, I'm in Germanic position, play that whip. If I'm over here, I'm in French position yeah. playing the whip. That's a whole other different movement, which is very important. And when someone says, well, French, get my molar. I, I really can't do that. And I'll say, well, play the ride symbol. And if you play the ride symbol, yeah. you'll notice that you do do it. So it's just being more aware of That's movement. a really common thing. I see that. I, oh, excuse me. I see that a lot as well. Yeah. Where people go, I never use that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sometimes they'll say, <coughs> I never play French grip. Yeah. And then I'll say, you never play French grip? They'll say, no. And I'll say, well, go to the ride symbol. Show me how you play it. Yeah. And then when they go to this position, it's like, whoa. Yeah, straight in French grip. They discover the yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. again, we just have to be aware that, that because of the angles of the drums and because of the different options that we have, understanding different hand positions will help out yeah. as we apply it to anything, whether it's even free stroke, the George Lawrence stone stroke, or now what we're talking about with molar. So with this motion now, if I play, if I play even like, like a groove like... Um, I'm playing French grip molar here. And I'm playing more Germanic position here on the snare drum. Yeah. So when my hand gets pulled up here, it's two different movements. I'm still in the molar yeah. motion, but I'm in two different movements. Mm -hmm. It's combining of those two different movements, which I call the choreography of drumming, like a dance choreography. I'm learning different movements. My sister's a fantastic dancer, and she, 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 she dances jazz and tap and, and modern dance. It's amazing. And all of her movements are you know, synchronized within that choreography mm. that she might have to have her hand, her right hand doing this and her left hand doing something else. So you need to learn the yeah. different movements of yeah. each hand. So it's the choreography of, of drum set movement. So if I'm playing that same groove here, and then I play it to my right hand, and I want to go to my right hi-hat, all of a sudden now my... Right hand on my snare was playing Germanic position molar. Now I'm going to go to French grip molar to make the change. And my left hand will come to my snare drum, yeah. probably in Germanic or American molar. So it's this, this is, this is what practicing does. And this is what the excitement of drumming is yeah. about, Rich. This is about, I'm going to figure this stuff out so I can see where it goes yeah. and see how it can help me out to sound like this.
So now with the option of playing, where I move, I want it to be as comfortable as possible. Yeah. So wherever I go, I want to understand that movement. So back at the practice pad, for me, is where it began. Yep. And with Jim Chapin, we were on the practice pad working on these movements first, like choreography, like in a dance yeah. school, where you'd work on a certain plie, which is a ballet movement. You practice the plie, that one movement, that, that bend of how you, how you bow in ballet, and that plie is one motion like we would have molar. Yeah. And when you learn all the different dance movements and you put them all together, you dance like my wonderful sister. Yeah. Not yeah. like me where it looks like <laughs> I'm, having a, I'm having an aneurysm attack, okay? <laughs> That's a whole different scenario. But for me, the process here is to understand the movement, relax with the movement, learn the movement, then apply them to the drum set. And like I always say, have fun in learning the movements and challenging yourself. That, to me, is part of the fun of education. And what you're doing here at Drum Ed is great because it's about challenging yourself and bringing you to learn new ideas about yourself. That comes to the drum set. That brings out your personality. And that's what makes music magic. Absolutely. <laughs>